Hi, welcome to my video. And in fact, welcome to the first video of my channel in which I will be talking about an interesting topic that has been coming in the computational engineering uh, community, which is called peridynamics. And why is this interesting? Because peridynamics has been since the year 2000 growing very steadily and it provides several advantages over the classical continuum mechanics technology. So this is something that uh, perhaps can be an interest of you. In, in particular, if you're trying to simulate crack propagation, phenomena, branching, and other topics in the computational solids as well. But why not? You can always also, of course, uh, implement this in the fluid um, in the fluid using the in the for for simulating fluids as well but um so i will be basically talking about this and trying to guide you through a series of videos in which i will show you how this technology can be coded can you can implement your own material models and so basically this is the work that i have been doing during my phd I have uh, just finished this and therefore I thought it would be a nice idea if I could uh, share this tutorial like and it could help during your research or if you are a third party engineer trying just to simulate and compare with what Peridynamics can offer to you when doing some other simulations using classical continuum elements, uh, that's okay as well. So my name is Pablo Castillo and please welcome to my channel. So. Starting now with the presentation, I will put, in, put it into full screen mode. And basically, I would like to limit myself to a series of short videos so that you don't get very bored and you can understand the main things that, uh, that this theory can offer to you. So I will speak in some introductions, some basics, and then I will leave you with a final thought um, just regarding how you can relate the coding, the equation of the dynamic equation of motion and what you can ac actually see in the theory, but with what you are actually looking in the code. So what is the main motivation of peridynamics? Peridynamics is a classical, it's, for, it's um, well, uh, the thing is that classical continuum mechanics have been successfully been applied to simulate a variety of material types and it is a based it is a theory based on partial differential equations in which you compute stresses and strains and among most commonly numerical approaches you can find finite elements and finite difference methods but there is an issue with classical continuum mechanics and because it is using the stresses and strains it is assuming a continuous body which is not always necessarily true. And this is particularly the case where you can see here on the left-hand side, cracks. Cracks that are a discontinuity on the displacement or even worst cases, branching. And uh, this is, for, for instance, a fracture on a crystal and so on, right? So solving these equations rely on a differentiation process, which is local and is well-suited for analytical con mathematics, but in computational mathematics, which what we are currently using as computational engineers, an integral approach might as well be preferred. So what would be the objective of this work? Well, first I will show you, um, I will give you some introduction, what is the peridynamics and how you can solve throughout this set of tutorial, uh, how you can even solve these uh, problems and uh, this crack propagation and on here you can see also like uh, the comparison with experiments in a where you can see some branching and then when, when you decrease the velocity you can only you can have a crack which is more or less even and so on so i will show you how to use the main code that i have been employing employing during the my past PhD, which is called Peridigm, and it's written in C++, and I will make also some hands-on implementation of some material models that you could actually, uh, that you could actually use. So, 
what is the, this polydynamic? So the first thing that would be interesting to know about is that the polydynamic is a reformulation of classical elasticity, where the stress and strain partial derivatives are substituted by force and displacement integral equations. And here you can see below the peridynamic equation of motion. This, as the first you can see here, is you have an integral here and you have new variables which are denominated as t. And there is a new notation introduced here. Don't worry, this, this might look a little bit uh, scary if you are looking this, at this at the first time, but uh, it's okay, we will go through it slowly. And here, the important thing is that the T is denoted as a force state. And we will, go, we will talk about the terminology state later on, which is, is, which is acting on a bond, which is uh, formed by the particles Q and X. The particles Q and X, you can see them here on the figure. This is the, if you, um, if you decrease one, the, the particle position X minus the particle position Q, you will get something that is called a bond. And this is the notation, this is, uh, and this is the bond C that is formed by these two particles Q and X. And if you make a deformation of this, um, of this bond, you will see that the deformation may be expressed with the variable y, y of x and y of q. This is the deformation of each particle or the deformation of the bond would be as not using the notation shown in here, the, the deformation of the bond, which is the deformation of the particle q minus the deformation of the particle x. Also, here, hx is denoted as the horizon and this is something new which is which is the spherical neighborhood of radius delta center or particle x what does what is this delta means it's just the radius the radius of the spherical neighbor neighborhood if we are talking about a 3d solid or it would be a circle if it was 2d and so so this is this just only tells you that all the particles Q that are inside this circle are in interaction with the particle X through some bond forces T. And how is this interaction uh, done? Through vectors, which are Q, the, the, uh, which are defined as each Q minus X. And so, and the rest of the, the notation, you might uh, be, al be already familiar with it. Rho is just the density. U with two dots is the acceleration of the particle X in a particular time. DVQ is the volume of the particle Q. And B is just an external body force acting over the particle X again in time T. So just to have a brief overview how is this related with classical theory you can see here uh, in terms of the kinematics that in the peridynamic theory we are using the deformation state and we call it the deformation state because we are speaking about vectors this quantity is just a vector of uh, this is the deformation of a particular vector whereas in the and this, that is all that we are employing in the peridynamics theory Whereas in classical elasticity, all the deformation is usually associated with a deformation gradient in which you are assuming the partial derivative, as we were speaking before, partial derivative of the deformation uh, with, respect to the, to, uh, with respect to the original position and so on. So if we look about, if we talk about the linear momentum, this would be the equivalent in the classical theory in which again you have partial derivatives here you have the divergence operator and in if we are speaking about the constitutive model you have here the cauchy stress in the and and the cauchy stress is is related with a constitutive model through a through a not through the function 
F through the deformation gradient F, whereas here in the peridynamic theory is just the bond force, which is with respect to a deformation state. And just as a reference, in this case, if you multiply the deformation state, uh, the deformation state, uh, state cross product with the force state, you will get zero. This is assuming this will be, of course, uh, in order to obey the angular momentum, whereas in this classical theory, this was done by the symmet symmetric property of the Cauchy stress tensor. So here, the important thing is just that the deformation, as you can see here, is partial derivatives. And as we said before, Partial derivatives are assuming that the, in order for them to work properly, they are assuming that the continuity, that there is a continuity in the displacement field. Whereas using peridynamics, it doesn't need to be that case. So that is the main, the main difference. That is, that is, that is what it is. The peridynamics theory, in fact. So, an interesting thing about the peridynamics is why it has become so popular and why is everybody talking about the peridynamics? Well, basically, and because you, you can introduce damage very easily to the bonds and especially when you are using an integral approach as this. And how is this done? Well, just to give you a brief, is you, the simplest way to introduce damage is by breaking the bonds. That means breaking the connection that each of these particles Q inside this uh, belonging to the horizon of the particle X um, have um, by breaking these connections, these uh, let's we can call them spring connections. And how do you compute this bond? How do you determine uh, the way that these bonds are going to break? You can simply compute a parameter called a stretch of the bond, which you can define it as the difference between the current deformation state minus the current, the original bond position divided by the original bond position. This can be defined uh, in the numerator, um, the bond extension divided by the absolute value of the original of the or the reference uh, bond position this will give you a stretch of the bond and if this stretch reaches further than a critical stretch variable that we can uh, later configure and we call it here s0 simply the bond the bond force will just drop to zero this means that here the damage was originally zero, and then suddenly when it cross, it passed over this critical stretch. It just the bond force just dropped, and now you don't have any more uh, force. Uh, you don't you don't have the effect of this bond acting upon the upon the particle X. So then, as you can hear, you can put it. You can see it here. You can d is equal to one and then the bond force is gone and then it is not longer con longer considered and how do you see reflected the bond damage in in the particle itself and when i say in the particle itself is how it's this reflected this bond uh, damage represented in this as a damage in this particle because you have many bonds that belong to one particle right well, the damage of this particle X can be represented only as the, well, it can be represented as the average of all the damage uh, bonds between the original number of bonds that had, that were inside this neighborhood. And that's it. This is just basically an average property. And in this way, let's say if you had uh, if this original neighborhood had 30 bonds and, and 15 of them are broken, then you would have a damage here represented by the value of 0 0.5. This is how the peridynamics work. So, um, I think, okay, and 
one other thing just to give you a uh, i can leave you with this thought is usually the peridynamic equation of motion that i was showing you here this is this is a new notation this is the the in terms of state variables but you can always compress this and represent it as a force function and this force function it's here this is just f in which f as i was telling you is just the representation of this so uh, perhaps uh, it would be interesting for you to understand how this uh, force why is this notation different between one and the other and the, the explanation is very very simple it's just that this notation was originally used for bond-based peridynamics which was developed in the year 2000 and later in 2007 it was introduced the state-based notation which is actually using the these underlined uh, capital letters uh, for indicating the force state why is this why is that difference well there is a difference because uh, in order as you know the co computation of the capital letter t and the computation of the small letter f they imply a constitutive model each and originally the f was considering only one parameter whereas in the fourth state it was considering the deformation of many other bonds and this end up with two parameters which i can i could explain to you i think would, would be better to explain to you in a different video so uh, thank you guys very much for this uh, video i hope you like it and please subscribe to my channel it would be very nice to know as well your comments have your feedbacks regarding this and if you would like to talk uh, if you would like me to talk about something in particular, please don't hesitate to just ask and leave me your comments, okay? And if you like it, just give it a like, okay? See you.